Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 5th of November 2018 and the time has just gone 12.50 GMT. It's been a fairly quiet uh, beginning to the week to be honest. Uh, we had a big sell-off in Asia over, over, over the, overnight. Uh, the, the latest figures, the latest service figures from China, the, the Kaishin survey of Chinese, of Chinese services was actually quite disappointing. Uh, it showed lower growth on the month and on top of that it actually missed expectations. Uh, we heard from the Chinese president who talked about the benefits and was promoting uh, free trade policy or, or, or trade, dis discussing uh, open and global trade uh, and also argued against the, the negatives of, uh, of protectionist policies but that didn't really kind of uh, uh, talk investors around actually buying into the market. It is worth pointing out that the, the trade spat between the US and China is still very much going on. So um, the Chinese president was clearly making his point of view very clear that he's in favour of, of trade and opposed to protectionist policies but until traders actually until traders actually hear that we actually have some sort of agreement between Washington DC and Beijing we're li it's likely it's actually going to remain just it's likely, it's likely that um, investors will remain a bit a bit sceptical of the of the entire situation. Uh, it's been a fairly quiet morning here in Europe in terms of economic indicators. We have some services figures out from the UK, which, which were disappointing. And we also have some dis disappointing um, investor confidence surveys from the, the Eurozone. Uh, European mar equity markets are broadly a bit higher than this afternoon. We're also seeing uh, a exactly higher open on the Dow Jones and also on the S&P 500. Uh, taking a quick look at the week ahead. Um, the week ahead can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, and if you scroll down, you, you'll find this article. So on Tuesday, we have a, the, the interest rate decision from the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia. On Tuesday, we've also a raft of um, PMI, PMI reports uh, from a number of countries around the world. On Tuesday, and, and also looking ahead to Thursday, over in the US, we have the midterms. We also have the Fed meeting. Uh, on Wednesday, we have first half figures from m and uh, on Thursday, in the early hours of Thursday morning, we'll have trade figures from um, from China. Bearing in mind the trade spat between Beijing and and, and also uh, Washington DC, these figures could be actually very uh, very important. Um, keep, uh, um, on Thursday, we have first half figures from Sainsbury's. On Thursday, we also have uh, third quarter numbers from Dropbox over in the US. On Thursday, we also have fourth quarter figures from Walt Disney. And on Friday, we have third quarter UK GDP. Uh, I'll take a look now at some of the major markets and see how they're getting on. Like I was saying, uh, the FTSE and Co were in negative territory, but they're now actually showing gains on the day. Uh, I'm starting off on the FTSE 100 and I'm looking at a weekly chart because I want to talk about this red line here, the 200 week moving average. And notice how we're actually back, well, comfortably back above the 200 week moving average. And even though it's not, it, even though we're still a long way away from the highs that we saw in May and we still have. We still, have, we still have, haven't really caught up the ground that we lost in October and September. While we hold above the 200 week moving average, that, that, is, that, that could be a positive sign uh, for the FTSE 100. Um, so the FTSE, the, the 200 week moving average comes to play uh, 6,961. We're currently on 7,125 in the FTSE 100. So while we, we hold above the, the, this red line here, the 200 week moving average, it's likely we, we could see further gains uh, on the FTSE 100. If you do like to press on higher from here, we could be looking heading towards this area here, uh, which comes into play at 7,220, basically the, kind of the, the lows of early September. So 7,220, 7, 7,250, that sort of region, if you were to kind of push on higher from here. If you do, though, fall back below the 200 week moving average, and we take off the most recent low here. This this, uh, this 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 mark here at 6,850 that would suggest we, we could be head for heading lower. We could be heading back down towards the February lows of 6,839, and if we go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards the lows of December 2016 at 6,682. Take a look now on the uh, the DAX, the German market. Similar situation again. We're starting off looking at the two and a week moving, uh, two and a week, the, the weekly chart to keep an eye on this red line here, the two and a week moving average. And the DAX was in probably, was definitely in worse shape than the FTSE 100. And actually, we're now managed to actually hold back above the two and a week moving average, which is a good sign for the DAX. Uh, but obviously, we're still in very much in a downward trend that, that began in June. That was a classic example of lower lows and lower highs. But in the near term, while we hold above this metric here, the turning. 200 week moving average, which comes into play just shy to south of 11,500. We're currently on 11,000, 
11,535 at the moment. If you can hold above 11,500 there, 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 thereabouts, we could see further gains being made on the on the DAX. If we do look, look to push on higher from here, we could be looking heading back up towards this area here at 11,692. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking up towards the kind of big psychological number of 12,000. And 12,000 isn't a million miles away from this trend line resistance, which is coming into play. Uh, so if we go beyond 12,000, the trend line resistance may come into play at uh, 12,050. Uh, should we turn lower? Or should we should we move back below the 20 week moving average? We could be looking heading back down towards 11,000. Take a look now. What's going over on the S&P 500 in the US? Starting off with the with the wider view, uh, if we draw a low a trend line uh, between the lows of of February 2016 and the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line here, which is actually respected quite nice nicely only last week. Uh, as you can see here, the market trader right down to this trend line here in around the kind of 2,600 mark, and then actually it's managed to push higher. I'll zoom in now, so you can kind of see, so you can get a better view of what's going on. So the market came down to this trend line, it started pushing higher. Notice how there was a decline in negative momentum, and actually and that's a swing to positive momentum, so we're actually pushing higher. So the uh, for the time being, the um, the upward move is being confirmed by the, the decline and it turned and subsequent turn to positive uh, positive uh, momentum but, but the area that, that, is, that has proven to be a bit difficult to recapture is this this red line here of the, the 200 day moving average at 2736 showing we move beyond that we could be looking, heading back up towards 2800 but if you do manage to kind of turn over on itself you could be looking at it back, back back lower and retesting the 200 day moving average uh, sorry we, we could be looking at turning uh, turning over I head back down towards the recent lows and possibly looking at, at retesting this trend line support which you come into play just north of 2,600, and if you do have a break below 2,600, that would would suggest we, we could be looking at further losses on the S&P 500. Take a look now at what's going on on the gold market. So with the uh, with the gold market here, um, it's been broadly been pushing higher since mid since mid August. Uh, it's found it really difficult to kind of really kind of power ahead. But nonetheless, it's, uh, it's, it's been pushing higher over the last number of months. While that holds above this area here at 12.14, it's likely we could see further gains being made on the uh, on the gold market. If we look to kind of push on higher from here, we could be looking heading, heading up towards 12.50. And if we go beyond 12.50, we could be looking towards this area here at 12.65. Uh, if the market turns over on itself and has a fairly sizable break below 1200, sorry, below 12.14, we could be looking at heading back down towards 1200 and a break below 1200 could take us down towards these lows here uh, in late September at 11.83, 11.84. The oil market is in a, has been in focus a lot the last uh, the last few weeks. Heavy gains sustained on the oil market. Uh, as of now, the United States has uh, fairly tough sanctions imposed on uh, on Iran. Uh, the aim is to kind of put political pressure on Iran. But as of as, as we found out on Friday, there are eight countries which are excluded from the exemptions. Um, so a number of countries can, can continue to purchase oil from Iran. So so as a way of actually not completely. Uh, having a, a a shock to the oil supply market and driving the, the price higher, so because of that, we actually are seeing further being, further pressure being kept on the oil market. And if you take a look at the the Brent oil market, we can see that after reaching a multi-year high in early October, it's been a fairly uh, fairly aggressive downward move. We've fallen below this red line here, the 200-day moving average, which comes into play at 74 spot or five. And to be honest, while we, we hold south of the 200-day moving average, uh, it's likely we could see further losses on the on the oil market. And if you do look, if you do look to kind of push further lower again from here, we could be looking heading back down towards the August low. Uh, just north of $70 per barrel. Uh, any moves to the upside in, in breakthrough at all may run, run into resistance in around the $75 barrel mark. And if you go beyond that, resistance may come into play at this yellow line here, uh, which, which is the 1 day moving average, which comes into play at 76 spot 80. Sticking with the um, oil theme, let's take a look at now what's going on on WTI. WTI market is actually even in, in fairly worse shape. Than the uh, than the Brent market. So similarly with WTI, which an all time, which, which, sorry, apologies, reached a multi year high in October, but has been in a fairly aggressive downward move since then. Notice how the market actually traded firmly below the trading moving average when, when this, this red line here. 
when it bounced when it, when it bounced back up towards the 20 moving average it managed to act as resistance and that was actually been, been pushing lower yet again and uh, notice how the, the recent lows here actually take off actually should take off the lows of mid June. So if we do need to kind of push lower from here, we could be looking any back down towards the early all April lows of um of 61 spot 78. And if you take out 61 spot 78, we could be looking at any back down towards the psychologically born $60 per barrel. Any moves to the upside uh, in WTI may run into resistance in around the $65 a barrel mark. But the big area to keep an eye out for will, will of course be the Trinity move. 200 moving average at 62 spot 67 spot 64 this 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 area here this is actually a good example of how old support can become new resistance and uh, um, notice how the journey moving average acted as support back in august but once the market actually um, traded firmly below it in october it found it very difficult to get back up above it again so if metric has been important in the past it makes it more likely makes it more likely that it will be important again in the future so keep an eye out for the journey moving average on WTI. Take a look, look now at the, uh, at the currency markets. Let's take a look at the euro versus the US dollar. Essentially, the, 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 the wider trend has been very much to the downside. Since between April and August, um, the, the euro dollar has been very much in a downward trend. Uh, the euro stage, a fairly decent comeback between mid-August and late September, but it's but unfortunately, the currency is actually going to be buckled under the pressure of the euro of the, of the US dollar yet again. So we're going to head back down south. If you take out the uh, the 113 area, that would point to a point that would be quite negative because uh, because it's, it's the recent lows, the uh, the August lows. And if you take out 113, that would point to further losses. We could be looking heading back down towards this area here in at one one spot 1111. Which levels haven't really been seen since June 2017. Uh, if you manage to push higher on euro dollar, the 115 spot, got a 115.10 area, could could act as resistance. It's been a fairly important metric before for the last number of months, so it could act as a, a potential um, barrier to, to a rally in the euro dollar. If you manage to kind of push beyond that, I'll, I'll then keep an eye out for the 100 moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play at one spot 15.84. Take a look now at uh, finally pound dollar. It's, this is this has been dragged around largely because of the Brexit, the Brexit, um, the Brexit chatter. Um, the economic indicators of the UK have been by and large have been positive. I know we had some poor services figures out this morning, but largely speaking, the economic indicators from the UK have been decent. But anything positive or negative comments or even chatter about Brexit is actually has been the, the biggest impact on the pound in recent months. So sterling. Had a bit similar to euro dollar, had a fairly sizable sell off between August, sorry, between April and August, as a, a, which, which a fairly decent comeback since then. But we have seen a fair bit of ground lost, and and the the, the positive move that we see out we saw at the back end of last week, the gains largely have, have been held. So we're trading just below the 130 mark. Uh, that, that's probably going to be a, a, it's likely to be a, a key level. If we if we can't get above 130, we could be looking at turning over on ourselves and falling back into the wider trend that's been in play. Head back, heading back down towards the August low of one spot, 26.61. If you can manage to reclaim 130 and actually build from there, we could be looking at back up towards the one spot, one spot 32.50 area. I uh, also want to talk about um, a couple of uh, a couple of um, webinars and seminars that we have coming up. If you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com, and under Learn. And they click on webinars and events. You can say that uh, tonight, um, Monday, the 5th of November, um, at 1900 GMT, 7 p.m. Uh, here in the UK, uh, we have the Fair Development Program, which is a webinar which you can sign up for. We also have, will have the part two of that webinar on Monday, the 12th of November. Uh, we, have, we have other also events and webinars, both, both um, online webinars and in-person seminars, which you are, which you are feel free to attend to also. If you have any comments made on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.